going to be sharing with you on the secret weapon of a believer. The secret weapon of a believer. And today's service is very unique because God is going to be doing something new. Hallelujah. Amen. For those of you who have not been given the prayer language, God will give you a prayer language in this meeting today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And for those of you who are already praying in tongues, God is going to put a fresh anointing and a fresh oil upon you and going to give you a new understanding of what you're actually doing. Hallelujah. And how to get results out of it. Hallelujah. The secret weapon of a believer. The first test we're taking from today is Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Romans 8 26 says, Likewise, the spirit also help in our weaknesses. So what is that place saying? It doesn't mean sickness. It means he, he help in your limitations. Hallelujah. The spirit himself help in your limitations. Because he knows them, so he helps you in them. Hallelujah. He said, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought to. He said, but the spirit himself, I love that word. The Spirit himself make intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He said, now he who searches the heart knows what is in the Spirit. He said, he who searches the heart knows what is in the Spirit. Because he makes intercession for the saints. That means he makes intercession for you. Hallelujah. According to the will of the Father. The only time that you cannot pray amiss is when you start praying in the heavenly language. He makes intercession for you with groanings that cannot be uttered. So the Holy Spirit knows you. Hallelujah. At the same time, he knows the deep things of the Father. That is the beauty of it. So what does he do when he prays for you? He takes your weakness and exchanges it for you. So he takes the weakness that he knows about you, your limitations. Then he takes what is in the Father and gives it to you. And take care of your weakness. Hallelujah. And just, for, just to lay a foundation, I want us to know that the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit can be like, like lightning unto like a water. So you know the way your normal water is? When you boil water, it can evaporate, right? Then if you freeze it, it can become solid, right? Then if you pour it in a cup, it can become a liquid that you will drink. But at the end of the day, they are all water. So that's what the Holy Spirit, that's what the God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit is. So we do not serve three gods. We serve only one God who reveals himself in three ways. Hallelujah. So every believer should understand that. So whether it's block form, whether in liquid form, or whether water is evaporating, it's water. So it's good that we know that. So I want to share something that is very unique with you today. That every believer and the church of Christ must understand. The moment you give your life to Jesus, the Spirit of God has been given to you. The Holy Spirit has been given to you. The moment you say the Lord's prayer, you accept God as your Lord and your personal Savior, the Holy Spirit has been given to you. So His Spirit is deposited in you the moment you give your life to God. For a long time, we have been taught that when you give your life to God, you have to wait to tarry before you receive the Holy Spirit. That's the reason why a lot of people have not received their prayer language. Because you are told to tarry. And there is a scripture for that. When Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem until I fill you with the Holy Spirit. But the reason that scripture, the reason Jesus told them that is because the Holy Spirit have not been poured out. So they have to tarry and wait for the exchange to come. Jesus was just leaving the world to release the Holy Spirit. So the first people who are to experience the Holy Spirit was told to tarry. But now the Holy Spirit is already on the earth. The moment anyone give their life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit has been given to you in exchange. Whether you have the prayer language or not. So every one of you that is 
that is born again, you have the Holy Spirit as a deposit inside of you. It is very important you know this so that you can begin to operate in the spirit from day one. The hindrances of people not speaking in tongues is because they feel they have to tarry and wait for it. No, the day you give your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit has been deposited in you. It is very important that we know that. Hallelujah. So at new birth, the Holy Spirit was given to you because you need him as a helper for the journey that you just started. We understand that when Jesus Christ asked the disciples to follow him, he was with them as their helper, right? Physically, they had him to ask questions. Physically, when they face difficulties, they can say, Lord, why couldn't we cast out this demon? And he will say, this kind does not go except by fasting and prayer. Glory to God. So they had, the, they had Jesus with them. So there is no way you will give your life to Christ and he will wait forever to give you a helper. So the moment you follow Jesus, what happened, the Holy Spirit has been given to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So it is very important that we understand that. So the believer's secret weapon is praying in tongues. Hallelujah. You cannot win without it. You cannot grow without it. You will fail and lose battles without understanding praying in the spirit is your weapon as a believer to succeed. Glory to God. The word of God says in Romans 8 verse 26 to 27, we read that before then I'm explaining it now. He said, likewise, it, the spirit also help in our weaknesses. So meaning that in your inadequacy, the spirit help you in your limitations. Things that you don't have knowledge of, the spirit help you in that area. Things that you are not able to see, the spirit help you in that area. He said, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought to pray. He said, but the Spirit himself. Hallelujah. Every believer needs the Spirit himself to keep winning. You need the Spirit him himself to succeed. You need the Spirit himself to stop the power of the enemy that have been holding you down. You need the Spirit himself to give you joy in your spirit when you are sad. The Spirit himself. Glory to God. So he said he makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. What does that mean? He gives you words where you have no words to say to the Father. There are some places that you're completely ignorant of what is happening. You just know that you are having trials, but you don't know where the trials are coming from. So that's what the Holy Spirit does. So he, what he would do is to give you was to speak to the Father. And those things you have no knowledge, natural knowledge of it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So praying in tongues is the believer's secret weapon. And I want you to pay attention because today if you are not, if you have not been given the prayer language, I strongly believe because he promised me that today that you will receive a prayer language. And I want you to pay attention to what comes out of your mouth after you have prayed in tongues. There are a lot of believers who are not operating in this dimension because they do not know that what prophecy does to the church is the same thing that speaking in tongues does to a believer. Do you understand what I'm saying? When someone comes and have a word from God to you and he give it to you, the same thing that prophecy does to you is the same thing that tongues does for you. Hallelujah. So you must pay attention to what comes out of your mouth in the language you understand after you have prayed in tongues. So what happened is that when you are praying in tongues, the Father reached down to your inside and bring out the serial number of your spirit. Every human spirit that God creates have a DNA and a specific serial number. And what God does is that in that serial number he put in your spirit what he wants to use you to do. 
So what happened when you start praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit pulls out your serial number and shows it to God and says, Lord, fulfill the will of the Spirit that you created. Glory to God. So as he's praying that from your spirit, because he lives inside of you, as he's praying that, he can put it in your own knowledge. You find out that you're praying in tongues, all of a sudden a prayer point comes to your knowledge. All of a sudden you are saying something that did not come from your head, but it came from your spirit. So that's where the prophetic comes in praying in tongues. So, and please pay attention to that because most of the cases that is instructing you on what to do next. That is instructing you on the battles God have won on your behalf or prayer point that you need to focus on or the instruction that he needs you to pick in where to go next. A, a lot of us are so equipped, but we don't know, we don't understand what God has done for us what the new birth have qualified you for, and yet you struggle as though you are an unbeliever. Glory to God. So praying in tongues does the same thing as prophecy does, as prophecy does to the church. So prophecy edifies the church, and praying in tongues edifies you. First Corinthians 14 verse Paul spelled that out to us. He said, he who speaks in tongues edifies himself. Did you hear that? He said, but he who prophesies edifies the church. So the same thing prophecy does to the church is the same thing that praying in tongues does for you. No wonder Apostle Paul said that I speak in tongues more than ye all. That is where he got the knowledge to write half of the New Testament. As he prays in tongues, the Holy Spirit will pick from his inside and pick from God and show him what to write. Until you begin to pray in tongues as a believer, you are limited forever. So you need to tap into that grace that is available to all believers. You don't need to wait for it. It's given to you. It's inside of you. All we need to do today is to help you activate it. Glory to God. I've had a lot of testimony of praying for people. They are saved and they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit spontaneously. Glory to God. So when you pray in tongues, you're prophesying to your future. And the kind of prophecy, you can't miss it. Because you have no human touch to it. Because human being can give you a prophecy because of it's passing through human vessel, then it can be missed or interrupted. Or, or the person who is carrying the prophecy to you, because it does not make absolute sense to him, is trying to add words that will make it make sense. Not because it's deliberately want to tell you something wrong, because sometimes when God tells you things, it's beyond you, so it would not make sense. So because they don't want to sound stupid, so they will add what it will make sense to you. But the prophecy that comes from praying in tongues, there is no human mix-up. It's pure, it's holy, it's instructed. Please, if you do not get anything today, I believe God brought you to this church because he wants to promote you in the spirit. He wants you to be able to grow above your limitations. Hallelujah. And I want us to know edification. He said that he who speaketh in tongues edifies himself. So edification is instruction or improvement of a person morally or intellectually. That's what edification means. So when you pray in tongues, you educate your mind on spiritual matters. He edifies you. Hallelujah. Also, he educates your intellect. There are a lot of things you will never be able to know until the Holy Spirit teaches you. 100% of any marital teaching that I teach, I read it from no man anywhere in the world. The Holy Spirit gave it to me from my stomach. So he educates your mind of things that you are not of by human means. Because as you pray in tongues, sometimes I'm just in the bathroom praying in tongues and he said 10 ways to make marriage work. It's so simple and I, I will put on my towel and quickly go and be writing from the Holy Spirit straight and direct. 
when you speak in tongues, you edifies your intellect. You educate your intellect. If you want to be able to invent things in your lifetime, being a believer is not just you coming to church. Being a believer is to educate your intellect to things that people can never have access to. That's what believer is. Most of the first, I think the first hundred university that was built in America was built by believers. People who have access to the Holy Spirit. So you are not to come to church just to learn. You are you to come to church, know the, the spirit realm, and bring it into the natural realm. I was reading a story recently of Ora Roberts. He was a dropout in college. And but the Holy Spirit told him, he said, you will build me a university. How can somebody who did not finish school, he had no curriculum, he had no money, he had no land, he had nothing at all. But all he had is that you will build me a university. And in the university, you will teach my student on how to hear me. So, and that dream was with him for a long time. And one time he got to a place, a land, and the Holy Spirit said, that will be that land. And they were still tapping oil from that land. So you know how much that land will be. So he went to the owner and said, I want to buy this land. They said, we are not selling. He kept going there. Dozens of times we'll send the lawyer, we are not selling our land. Why do you want us to sell our lands for, to you? So he was praying in tongues one day, and the Holy Spirit said, go back again because I have instructed their mind to sell. So he, went, he sent his lawyer to go back there. And when the lawyer went there, they said, hey, thank God you're here. We decided last night to sell the land to you guys. So now they said, for the sake of our taxes, you see how God does things? We will not ask you to pay the land once. We'll spread it over many years. Just pay small deposit. Because he did not have the money to buy it. Hallelujah. And the land, hallelujah. Glory to God. And the land was acquired. One day he would take his son and drive to the place. And he was praying and saying, Lord, what do I do? I, I don't even know what to do. No curriculum, nothing. And God told him, he said, start praying in tongues. As you pray in tongues, I will bring from the realm of the spirit and bring it to your intellect. As they start praying in tongues, the ideas begin to come out. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. And that university is, is there, or a robot university. Being a believer does not make you less. It makes you more. The reason why a lot of people are not able to be more because they don't take spirituality as serious things. Glory to God. When you are a believer... God will tell you things to come. That's what the Holy Spirit said. He will teach you all things. He will tell you things to come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I remember one day I was going to work in the morning. Then I was still working in the bank. And because of, because of the traffic in Lagos, you have to leave home by 5 a.m. Though work resumes 7.30 because you can't, if you don't leave home 5 a.m., you won't get to the work, you won't get to your place of work by, t by, by 10 because of heavy traffic. So I went like usually the way I would go, and under the bridge in Victoria Island, I rolled down, I was, my, my, my car was rolled down, and somebody came from under the bridge and brought a gun to me. Oh, yeah. Give me your phone. Oh, yeah. You know the way they will sound. And I was so confused. I was like, Reke, he opposed Sata Haka. He had mantopo. He stones. He said, he, now this one, now this one, now this one. I didn't speak any tongues. He said, ha, now this one, now this one. He went back and ran away. Praying in an unknown tongues. There is so much power that is within our wit that we don't even know. <laughs> Glory to God. So please pay attention to what comes into your mind when you have prayed in tongues. That's when you begin to have instructions from God, direction from God. And you begin to have God teach your mind what your mind does not know from anywhere. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 through to 15. Who shall have a 
He said, for if I pray in tongues, my spirit prays. There are a lot of us that have never put our spirit to pray. Our mind prays. And when your mind, when your mind sits, that's where fear sits. The realm of your mind, that's where Satan meets with man. Satan has no access to your spirit, in case you don't know. So your mind is where Satan meets with you. It's where temptation meets with you. The realm of the mind is where your feelings are. It's where everything are. And then you can't pray from that realm and succeed. Because you are in the same realm where Satan is. But when you pray from your spirit, you dig down into your being because he has no access to that. The only one who has access to your spirit is God. Is why any man, when you die, your spirit goes to the maker. So he said, when I pray in tongues, he said, my spirit prays. He said, but my understanding is unfruitful. So what I'm praying, I do not know when my spirit is praying. He said, what is the conclusion then? He said, I will pray with the spirit and I will pray also with my understanding. I will explain what that means to you in, in a while. He said, I will sing in the spirit and I will also sing in my understanding. What is Paul saying? This is where your activation of, the, of, of your pray, uh, prayer, prayer, prayer language will come up today. What is he saying? I have control over it. I will pray. I have a will. I will pray in the spirit because it's already in me. He said, then I will pray in my understanding also because as you pray in the spirit, the spirit will educate your mind. And then you pray with your mind. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives you utterances. But as a human being, you, you can start praying in the spirit. You can stop praying in the spirit. See, more than ever before, that's the knowledge I want you to know today. That you can start praying in the spirit. You can start it up. You can stop. You can start. Don't the Holy Spirit give you all trans, but see, you have will to be able to start it because it's on your inside. So that's why I know today, those of you who are not praying in your prayer language, you will start to pray in your spirit today. Because the deposit is already inside of you. We will jumpstart you in this meeting, and then you leave this meeting. As we jumpstart you, we are praying in the Holy Ghost. You pick from our language and begin to pray. As you pick that language, the Holy Spirit begins to give you your own utterances. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ha Quickly, three things that happen when you pray in tongues. Three things happen when you pray in tongues. Number one, you give glory to God when you pray in tongues. Do you know that? When you're praying in tongues, you give glory to God. The word of God says in Acts chapter 2, verse 11, he said, the, Crit the Cretans and the Arab, he said, we hear them speaking in our own tongues, which is their own language, the wonderful words of God. The Acts chapter 2, when the power of the Holy Spirit fell on the disciples, these were the statement of people who were hearing them. That, uh, what are they speaking? Some people said they were drunk. Some people said we can hear them in our own language that they are singing the wonders of God. So that's the reason why when you pray in tongues, you have results. Because out of your will... God is taking from your stomach and giving praises to him. And when you praise God, what happened? The heavens are open upon you. So when you pray in tongues, you give praises to God. Number two, when you pray in tongues, you speak mysteries in the spirit. 1 Corinthians 14 verse, verse 2, he said, For he who speaks in tongues does not speak to any man, but he speaks to God. He said, for, he said, for no man understands him. So you're talking in the realm that man have no understanding. He said, and however, he said, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. The things that cannot be decoded by Satan or by man. I have heard where people will hear people's prayer, and because they hear your prayer, they begin to use it to fight you. But when you pray in tongues, no one can hear your prayers. They can't decode it. Satan can't decode what you're saying. So that means you have free access to heaven because he himself is the one taking the prayers and putting it in his own ears. Wow. 
That is so powerful. Thank you, Jesus. What he does when you pray in tongues, I said that before, that, that he takes your, the DNA of your spirit and he reminds God what he created that spirit for. So that means while you're praying in tongues, you're betting your destiny. You're creating your future. You're reminding God that you are created for a purpose. Glory to God. And number three, when you pray in tongues, what happens? You pray according to the will of God. You don't miss pray. There are some of you, your destiny is to reach out to nations of the world and bless them with the power of the Holy Spirit. There are some of you, you are to create, you are to create something that will help the human race live better. For some of you, God have given you anointed hand, you are to become medical doctors and represent God there. There are different purpose, different assignments. So when you pray in tongues, what happens is that you bet your destiny. Not the destiny you created, the one he created. Because there are a lot of people who are in careers right now. That is off where God wants you. But when you pray in tongues, he leads you to where he wants you. Not where you want yourself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So praying in tongues is even just more than a prayer language. It is partnering with the Holy Spirit to pray out his will for your life. So quickly before we start practicing this this morning and allow the power of God to, 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 to activate the Holy Ghost inside of you. If you have never prayed in tongues before, all you need to do in this session is to open your mouth and start to pray with us. Hallelujah. And let the Lord take you and take from him and give you his own prayer language. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse 14, it said, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterances. So as we jump start you this morning and you begin to pray with us, then the Holy Spirit comes in and begins to give you utterances because it's already in you. It's already in you. Hallelujah. You do not need to tarry like the apostles tarries because the Holy Spirit is already poured out. He's on earth. He was given to you the day you said the salvation prayer. He said the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So when you, when you say to God, when you give your heart to Jesus, he comes to bear witness with your spirit. So he gives his spirit spontaneously to bear witness that you are not mine. Hallelujah. So the Holy Ghost is inside of you. First Corinthians again, 14, 14 said, he said, if I pray in tongues, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. He said, what's the conclusion? I will pray in the spirit. So I want someone to say today, I will pray in the spirit. I will pray in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. No that he said, I will pray in the spirit and I will pray in my understanding. So that sounds that, that sounds like something he have control over. I will do it. He didn't say the Holy Spirit will help me to pray. He said, I will pray in the spirit. So he have control over it. And I will pray in my understanding also. So you can start praying in tongues because the spirit have already, the Holy Ghost is already deposited in every child of God. And so before we start this morning, if you have not said the salvation prayer, or for some reason that you have drifted away, even if you have said that before, please don't stand on your way. Because the Holy Ghost wants to transform your life. The reason he gave this message is because he wants to transform someone right now. So don't stand on your way and say, oh, I will just pray with them. Then you have stand on your way. You need to first of all be saved then the spirit of God is in you, then it begins, you know, it can be stirred up in this service right now. So in a moment, we will give you that opportunity where you are seated to say the salvation prayer. Then we start by activating the spirit. And for those who are, are already speaking in tongues, grace will be activated afresh for you. The praying in the tongues is a lifestyle. It should not be what you do once in a while when you're happy or when you're sad. 
It should be what you do always. Those who want to hear God always speak in tongues always. Because that is the way you activate the spirit of God in you. Glory to God. So let me advise you. Sometimes some of us are driving and you, you play worship song. That's okay. But this season I want to encourage you. Start praying in tongues when you drive. You become your own prophet. God begin to speak things to you to direct you. Start praying in tongues always. Some of the challenges that have kept you for years after years. God is waiting for you to activate it so that he can give you the solution to the problem. So start praying in tongues. He who prayed in tongues said, for your spirit prayed. Hallelujah. In that realm of praying in tongues, there is no blockage. There is no fear. Because sometimes some of you are praying. Wait, after you pray the prayer, something tells you, how can this be? How can this be answered? Because it's too big for your mind. But when you pray in the spirit, there is no doubt that can come in because that is not in the realm of the flesh. Glory to God. So God is about to deposit something inside of you that will transform your world. So what we'll be doing in a moment is we will pray in the spirit. We will stop and we will pray in our language. And please take note of the things that comes out of your mouth in English language the moment you start praying in tongues. That will be instructions. See, God have not gathered the seed of Jacob to seek, him, to seek him in vain. You have not come to church today just to be one other service and you go back with your same challenges. He has called you today to instruct you. And he wants to use the spirit in, in you to instruct you. Hallelujah. So you have to pay attention of what he says to you the moment we start doing this exercise in this service. Hallelujah. And no. The last, lastly, note that you can tap into the spirit at any time. That's the beauty of it. He gave you his spirit. You can wake up early in the morning. The first things that come out of your mouth is praying in the spirit. I want you to know sometimes you may not feel like doing it. It is not about feeling. So you start it by your own will. It's not about feeling. You pray in tongues so that you are instructed Consigning the day, consigning the new week, consigning the new season. Hallelujah. Those who operate in the, in, the, in, in the gift of the word of knowledge, praise in tongues. Because that is where understanding will come to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I want everyone that is not, that have not given he or her life to Christ, I don't need you to come out. I just need you to be intentional. And just pray that prayer in your heart. No, you say it with your mouth. The Bible said you believe in your heart, you say it in your mouth, you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and you will be saved. Hallelujah. Or if you had been saved, but you feel that you are not 100% living the life you should live as a believer, all you need to do is to say after me as I pray. Please, everyone, honor the Lord. Close your eyes so that those who want to say the prayer will not feel ashamed of saying it. Father, Lord, I want you to put your hand in your chest because something is about to happen for you. And say, Lord Jesus, today I come to you as a sinner needing a Savior. Father, forgive me all my sins. And today I believe in my heart that you came to die for my sins. And you have resurrected Father, from today, I decree and declare that you are my Lord and my personal Savior. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus, and I bless your holy name. Hava basonta hia kopo sente hia manto posanda hi kapa topo sanda hia. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone who have made that confession today. Let the power of the Holy Spirit be released upon them right now in the name of Jesus, bringing them to the kingdom. You said, oh God, by the Spirit we cry, Abba Father. They can genuinely cry, Abba Father, because your Spirit has been released upon them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we want to start right now.
I want us to be on our feet. What you should do if you are not already praying in a, if you no long, if you not already have a prayer language, when those who have the prayer language begin to pray, what you should do is to put what you hear them pray, put it in your mouth, open your mouth, and begin to speak it. So let me explain this to you. The way it is by revelation, you can run by another man's revelation, right? Right? So also, the Bible said the Holy Spirit gives utterance. So what those people are speaking is what the utterances the Holy Spirit have given to them. So what you would do is to put that utterance in your mouth. As you begin to say it in this service, then the Holy Spirit will come, into, come within you and begin to give you your own prayer language. Hallelujah. Are we ready to do that today? Hallelujah. Everyone who can pray in tongues, I want you to lift up your voice. And if you cannot pray in tongues, pick the tongues of another person and begin to speak it. And as you pray it right now, you begin to see the Holy Ghost will give you your own utterance. Let us go. Rahi patopo sandahia. Mando basu tahia kopo sotoho. Rege sandaha. Riga sandahia kopo soto. Mando robo shandahia kopo sa. He kapatu pasanda hiya kopose. Regede haman topo sanda hiya koposa. Rege bakura bashunda kahiya koposanda. Reke posanda. Give your voice. Give your voice. Rega da bahu mandorobo sende here bosuta. Riga shunda harabasuta ha. Mandere boshunto kohiya kasanda. Rige zende here bokohoro bosunta. Zinda rabakupa sinta be intentional. Ragada ha mandobo sende. Rege sende kehia. Open your mouth. Riga shanda harabakupa sinde. Rege zende here bosuta. Ragaba harabakupa sanda. Heke posoto kohia. Ragaba huarabasunda kahia. Zunda rabahu mandobo sete kehia. Reke sende kehia kasanda. Ke sanda hia kasanta. Thank you, Jesus. Let us stop. Now begin to pray in your own language. The language you understand. Please be mindful of the first words that come out. Rehia. Father Lord, we bless your name. Hiya koposa. Hiya ha. We worship you. We adore you, Father, for the power of the Holy Spirit that is released in this place. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. The utterances you are releasing right now. Oh, sahia. Heke posun. Heke suntaha. Thank you for the fire of God that is being released upon someone's heart right now. Thank you for the glory of God. Thank you for the life of someone that is, Father, that is stirred up right now. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, let's start again. Praying, praying tongues, praying tongues, praying tongues. Rahia po sanda here. Kopo to horobo sanda. Be intentional. Pick someone's utterances and begin to speak it. Pick someone else close to you. Pick the utterances of that person and begin to speak it. And he will give you your own utterance. Rahi bodorobo sanda hiya matopo. Zigedegedege hiya koposuta. Raga mando. Mazunde heboko soto. Heke posuta hiya. Mantopo soto kohiya. Riga daha matopo soto. Heke posuta kahiya kasanda. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name. Is there anyone here that can pray in tongues yet? Come on. Is there any other person who can pray in tongues? Come on. Amen. Is there someone who can pray in tongues? Is there someone who can pray in tongues? Who can pray? Okay. So... We want to thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Just three people who can pray to us. And the people who cannot pray to us should come up. Thank you, Jesus. Pray in your utterances. Please, someone pick up the language. Open your mouth. Open your voice, speak, just pick whatever she's saying and start saying it. Thank you, 
Open your mouth. Open your mouth. He said, he said, open your mouth. I will fill it up. Open your mouth. Rahita. Zige de herebo. Mando robosata hia. Kata basoto. Zige de gede ke hia. Kopo soto ko hia. Daba soto ko hia. Kepo soto ko hia. Zeke teke hia. Kopo sanda ka hia. Kopo se. Ragaba gobo sanda ka hia. In Jesus Christ's name. Hold on. Then the tongue that you pick up, speak it. Pray. Keep praying it, keep praying it. He will, he will give you your chances. Ketabaha. Kashinda here. Potoho. Sanda here. Kata here. Vodarabaha. Zegedeke here. Zekedeke here. Kopo Soto. Zigede. Kashanda ha. Soto ko here. Kashanda here. Holy Spirit, more father. More father. Hikapa Sonto. Yes, he's pouring a haraba sanda. More, more, more. More Holy Spirit. More. Give her own utterances more, Rakahia. Give her own utterances more. They keep Sanda more, Lord. More, Lord. More utterances, more utterances, more utterances. Pray, pray, pray. Keshende hiya, Kasanda hiya, Kosoto. Keshende hiya, Koposoto. Kashanda kahiya, Koposoto hiya. Zige deke hiya, Koposanda. Please, if you are here, pick up language, pick up language. The Holy Spirit, Kahiya Santa hiya. Pick up languages. Pick up language in the spirit. Pick up language in the spirit. He wants to give you your own utterance today. You must not live here without the prayer language. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you,
Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you. What God asks us to do today is to stir up the language in everyone that His Holy Spirit is here. So the instruction is pick up my language, pick up my utterance of any person's utterance. Then, as you pick it up, the Holy Spirit will give you your own utterance. Let's do it again. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless your holy name. Keep praying, keep praying. Let's 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 see that then we'll do it one more time. Anyone who have received a prayer language, this is the next step of what he wants to do right now. So when you pray in that tongues, and then when you turn into your own prayer language, he begins to instruct you. Hallelujah. Let us go. Let's pray in the tongues. Every one of us, everyone that just received a language. Rahi patobo sadaha. Mando bosanda. Stand up. Reke po soto kohia katahia matopo. Ragabagu bosende kehia kopo soto. Reke po soto. Do you want to receive the prayer? Of, you want to receive in tongues? Okay. I'll, I'll do every child here today will pray in an unknown tongue. So hold on. Your, your, own, your own people, will, your own will be the next. Go and sit down. I'll call, I'll call every one of you. You will pray in tongues. Rika basom to homo sandahia. Hopo sita kahia kataha. Rege bo sandahia kopo soto kohia. Please, let's be intentional. This service was predestined before today. He said clearly what he wants to do today. So please don't stand on your way. Please don't go without your prayer language. He knows why he wants to give it to you. Your next victory is dependent on it. Do you understand me? So please don't, don't take things casually. When you come to the presence of God, don't take things casually. Hallelujah. There are appointed days in human's life. You don't get it twice, it's once. Thank you, Jesus. Oh yeah, let us go. 
Wahi Amazon to want to go. Let's pray in tongues. Rege bo sada hama topo sanda. Pick up someone else's language if you can pray in tongues, and God will give you yours. Rege bo sanda here. Mandoro bo sete ke here kopo soto. Raga ba kopo suta here matopo sete. Raga daga daga here kopo soto. Eke po soto. Open your mouth. Rege bo sata here kasanda. Any language that you love that you are hearing that heavenly language, pick it up. Rege bo sata. Hama topose, raga batu pasende ke hia kopose, raga bakupa, raga raga ha, raga 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 hehero bosondo, manda bahu pasende, regebo soto posoto kohia, raga baguba sende here bohorobo, raga bakupa sanda hia, go badorobo sete ke hia koposondo, mandaribo koho, thank you Lord. Daka hia kosoto kohia. I am breathing upon this church a fresh breath. Reke posoto kohia. I am breathing upon my people a fresh breath. Reke posuta hia matopo. Heka patopo sete. Heke posoto kohia. I will take that pain away from your heart. The injury of your soul. I will heal it for you. Rahi kapatopo sete. Reke bo soto hopo soto. Zada hara bakopo soto, mandara bakopo soto, hika patopo sete hia. Thank you, Jesus. Garabako hobo sanda. Let us talk. Speak, speak in English. Speak in your language that you understand. Right now, and the first words that come out, be mindful of them. Father, Lord, we bless you. You can start with times given, but a word will keep coming out. That's how he instructs you. You pick from what have, have been said in the spirit, you pick it to the natural. Reke sanda here. After this day, you are winning every battle that comes to you. You are prospering. Favor is coming your way. Rahi mandorobo sanda here. Home manto posanda here. Kasanda. You are winning. Rege posoto kohia. Zanda hamato posoto kohia. Zike teke here. Kosoto ho. Mandarabako posoto kohia. Kasanda. He kapato posede here. Bosoto. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise and glory. We exalt your holy name. We adore you, Father. We appreciate you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I want us to know for that which we have received today is a lifestyle. As you're driving home, start praying in that language. From today, ideas will begin to come to you. There are some of you, ideas will come to you to set up a business in this nation that will make you a multi-millionaire. The Holy Spirit is the most powerful spirit on earth, in heaven and on earth, and is inside of you. You, can't, you shouldn't fail with it. You shouldn't fail with the power of God inside of you. It will give you ideas. It will draw you closer to the being of God. You know the reason why people can comfortably sing? They don't pray in tongues. They are not mindful of the holiness inside of them. Because the more you pray, the more he draws you to himself. The more sin become an alien to you. You just can't do it because holiness is speaking always inside of you. So make it a lifestyle. Pray in the bathroom. Pray when you are driving. Pray in tongues. It is very important. It's a weapon. See, you will be winning and fighting the enemy you don't even know. In your understanding, you don't know, but you are warring them. And you are succeeding over them. And I believe from today, your life will never be the same. And if you are already born... If you, are already, if you already had a prayer language before today, because I know every one of you that didn't have it now, hallelujah, then activate it more. Know that it's a prophetic gift as well. As you pray in the spirit, God brings from your inside and from his inside and make it known to you. The more you do it, the more you know in the spirit realm. The more you win battles. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let us be seated in a, a moment. How many of you got a prayer language today, first time? Hallelujah. Glory. See what Jesus has done. First time. Let us count. Hallelujah. Please keep your hand lifted up. Can someone count how many people got a prayer language? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did, did I count that well? One, two, 
Please, can you put up your hand again? Let, let's be sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So what do you do? Just keep praying in that language. And please, it will mature. Even to today, I still get fresh languages. So just like when you start speaking a language, is the, you first of all start speaking one word. Most of the cases, just you, you can greet. And for people who are not saved, they can curse. But you now in the spirit, you can destroy demons. It's the same thing. The first language will be giving you is to keep Satan away from you. You're just devouring the, the camp of the enemy so that they can let you go. Hallelujah. Keep practicing it. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just lift up your name for what you have promised to do today and you did. Father, we worship you, Father. We give you all the glory and honor. We celebrate you, Father, that this oh God spirit will grow in them. Their language will grow and mature and they will have victory in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Quickly, we are going to be taking the flesh and the body. The, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. John chapter 6. Turn to John chapter 6, verse 53. <coughs> he said, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of God, of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Unless you feed on his flesh, you feed on his blood. He said, you have no life in you. He said, whosoever eats my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life. Wow. So this flesh and blood, this covenant he have made for us, is able to draw you to eternity. You are on earth, you are already dwelling. You have eternal life. You are, you are unkillable. Hallelujah. He said, I will raise him up on the last day. He said, for my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink he did. He said, he who eats my flesh and drink my blood abides in me and I in him. So as you drink today and you eat, you abide in him. And the Holy Spirit abides in you. Glory to God. Pastor Daniel. Pastor Daniel. I'm going to be praying on the communion as you eat it. I just want you to, one minute, ask God what you want from this from his flesh and his blood today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father Lord, as we partake of your communion today, let everything that is not of you in our life be flushed out of our system in the name of Jesus. Father, everything that is in you, that is not in us. Father, as we partake of the communion today, let us receive our portion in the name of Jesus. Father, paraventure, any one of us here, we are sick in any part of our body, whether in our mind, Daddy, as we partake of your flesh and your blood, let your healing power come upon us in the name of Jesus. Daddy, your word says that you are the balm in Gilead, and everyone that took your flesh and your blood he never su suffered loss. Daddy, from today, let us never su suffer any form of loss in the name of Jesus. Father, I heal us of every infirmity in the name of Jesus. Father, I stand on your word and I decree and I declare that the spirit of infirmity is, is far from us as we partake of this communion today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us share the communion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you.
Have we all got to the communion? Thank you. Hallelujah. I want us to open I want us to open this afternoon. I want us to open to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. He said, "Give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will will be poured into your lap. For with the same measure you used, it will be measured to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time for us to give our offering to the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time to give our offering. It's time to pay our tithe. It's time to give our special seed. We can give through cash, cash restoration, dollar sign, cash restoration. Dollar sign, cast restoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to raise up our seed up. If, if you've prepared your offering, raise up your seed. Raise up your seed. Thank you, Jesus. we are done, I want us to pray on it. Father, in the name of Jesus, every hand that is lifted up this afternoon, Father, as they've come to honor you with their time and their seeds and their offering and their tithe, Father, let these hands never go down in want in the name of Jesus. Father, as they've honored you with their, with their seeds this afternoon, Father, bless the works of their hands in the name of Jesus. Father, let their life, O oh Lord, let their life begin to produce fruits, O oh Lord, beyond their imagination. In the name of Jesus, I bless every hand that is lifted up this afternoon. Father, let them become a blessing to others. In the name of Jesus, bless them to the extent that those that are blessed, we call them blessed. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, King of glory, for in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's begin to give our offering.